Hey guys, my name is April from Unsolicited Plant Talks and welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to talk about anthocyanins and if you are wondering what anthocyanins are, those are the pigments that are responsible for your plants like this Hoya right here, Hoya buntakensis, to develop purple leaves, all these coloration that you can see in this plant based off of environmental factors, nutrients and all that good stuff. They are not always bad, they are not always good and I'm going to go through all of those with you so if you're interested make sure you like and subscribe to this channel because that's all we do. We talk about plants and by we I mean I talk about plants <laughs> and I talk specifically about Hoyas. So hopefully this can answer some of your questions when it comes to sun stressing, what does it mean when a plant is changing its color and even with the plants that are not sun stressed and it still does have all the characteristics of what an anthocyanin is on the leaves and you're unsure what it is and how to handle it if you even have to do anything about it. So let's get started. An anthocyanin is a pigment that is responsible for creating all these beautiful colors on your leaves. It's not only produced on the leaves, sometimes flowers can also change in color based off of its environment. And I actually made a really good post about it on our Instagram. So if you're interested, I'll go ahead and link that down below. And while at it, make sure you follow us on Instagram as well, because that's all I do, talk about plants and share beautiful photos. So if you're into all that kind of stuff, make sure you go ahead and follow. This Hoya buntakensis right here is one of a really good example of what an anthocyanin can do to a plant, specifically Hoya. Since we sell a lot of Hoyas, I thought this would be a really good example. Why do Hoyas produce anthocyanins? One of the reasons is to attract pollinators. Anthocyanins also affect the flowers, not just the leaves. And sometimes, depending on the environmental factors where your plant's growing, you might be surprised that your Hoya that you usually produces white flowers is now producing pink or purple. And that is because anthocyanins doesn't just stay on the leaves. It also can go to the stem, it can go to the flowers and other parts of the plants. And as you guys know, for pollinators, sometimes the more colorful the flowers are, the more enticing they are for them to pollinate. Anthocyanins also protect the plant from environmental stress, including, but not limited to, low temperatures. It prevents the cells from collapsing. It prevents the cells from freezing and damaging the cells. High temperatures, it prevents the cells from bursting or collapsing onto itself. Drought, nutrition deficiency. Not only that they're helping these cells to stay intact, but they're also helping the plant to produce new cells to replace all of the damaged ones. Another good example that I wanted to share is that whenever you scratch or accidentally scratch a Hoya leaf that usually sun stresses, when you create that wound and when you create that scar, when you sun stress the plant, it is so obvious because there's a lot of anthocyanin around that wound site that actually help that wound heal to protect it from getting more damage. So whenever you see damages on the leaves, especially like silver dollar or Hoya Wilbergrave silver, when you accidentally scratch those leaves, because they're so sensitive, they sun stress very easy, it also shows those imperfections very easily. There's nothing to be worried about it as far as the health of the plant. Fortunately and unfortunately, it is going to be cosmetic and it's going to stay there and it's not really going to go away at all. Let's talk about anthocyanin's environmental triggers. Number one, exposure to bright light. Sun stressing a Hoya typically means you're providing a lot of light. Sometimes providing a lot of light to a plant, you're also blasting it with high amounts of UV. And those UV are not necessarily always good for your plants. So what anthocyanins do is they filter all of the light that's going through and being absorbed by the plant. And it is filtering all of those harmful UV that the plant doesn't need, preventing damages to the plant's DNA and other important structures. When your Hoyas are extremely dehydrated, you're also going to see its leaves turning into a different color. Now, that is also the anthocyanin that's trying to protect the plant from drought. Drought can compromise the stability of cell membranes. And so what they're doing is they're trying to send signal to the plant, telling it to close its stomata, which is the pores of the plant, maintaining its internal temperature, trying not to lose as much water as it can so it can wait a little longer until you're able to provide your plant enough water. And it can also signal to the roots of the plant to alter its growth habits so that it can grow grab as much more water as they can in the surrounding areas. So if the plant is planted in the ground or somewhere in its natural habitat, it will actually shoot out a lot more roots and it's going 
to produce more subshoots of the roots so that it can obtain as much water as it can because obviously the plant is saying, I am very thirsty. It acts as a communicator for the plant. So it sends signals to the roots to produce more roots or expand a little bit more to find more water, more moisture, and also send signal to the pores or the stomata of the leaves to close up so we can retain a little bit more moisture as much as possible until we can get more water again. You're probably wondering, or you probably have plants that are in low light conditions, and you're probably looking at the leaves and saying, how come I have those dots underneath my leaves and I'm not even providing harsh environment or harsh condition for my plant. Low light is also a harsh environment for the plant. And what it does, like I said, it's a communicator. It's actually really cool. So what anthocyanins do is that they send out signals. So they have to be activated first. Most of the time you're going to see them underneath the leaves. When activated, they send out signal to the plant, to the stems, to the leaves that the plant needs to produce longer stems so it can look and find a better light source and also the leaves so that it can grow better bigger leaves so it can capture a lot of light that is necessary for the plant growth. Another cool thing about anthocyanins is they also aid in production of flowers. So let's say the plant is dying, let's say way past what the anthocyanins are comfortable with, what they actually do is they communicate with the plant to produce flowers just in case that the plant doesn't get revived, then we have a second chance of producing flowers, hopefully being pollinated, and then continuing our life form. These dots that you see right here are not a fungal infection. This is typical for plants, including Hoyas. Although it is not typical for every single Hoya, you will only see them on certain plants or certain types, certain species, and most likely based off of the evolution that the plant has gone through, based off of their natural habitat. So some plants have it, some plants don't. And if you see something like this, don't worry. It is natural and there's nothing to be worried about. There's nothing that you can do to remove them. So if this is something that you're not particularly very interested in, you might want to look for Hoyas or other plants that don't sun stress or don't produce these anthocyanins, and there's plenty of them. However, if you don't mind the look, as long as this is giving you peace of mind that the plant actually has its own protective mechanism, then nothing to be worried about. You're all good. So if you ever see anything like this on the back of your Hoyas, even though you're not exposing your plant into bright light, that is just telling you that the anthocyanins are ready because most of the time as well, anthocyanins are already present, even though you're not exposing the plant into stressful environments because even though you're giving your plant low light, the plant is always trying to be ready for whenever there's a change of environment and you blast it with lots of light accidentally, then your plant is not going to be overly shocked because there's actually going to be anthocyanins that are already present to negate that kind of environment. So it's just always ready, which is really freaking cool. It's not a harmful occurrence, so you don't have to worry about it. In conclusion, anthocyanins and the colorful plants is not just for the looks. They actually communicate with us. Plants do communicate with us. Sometimes the colorful hues might just be telling you, hey, it's almost winter or it's fall or it's too cold at night. Oh, it's too hot where you're keeping me at. Those are just some of the communication skills that the plant has and all plants do tell their own stories. And I thought this is a very interesting one to share with you guys because this is something that has always fascinated me. So next time you see a unique color or pattern on your plant, take a moment to appreciate its plant story. And remember, nature always has its way of communicating with us. Paint a beautiful canvas. Don't forget that every plant is a masterpiece because honestly, that's how I see them. If you enjoy this video, please comment and subscribe. I love talking about plants. And if you enjoyed this, if you hit that subscribe button, then you're not going to miss any of our videos. And it just makes me feel so happy. So I really appreciate it. So if you guys enjoyed it, I'll see you next time. Thank you and bye-bye.